Hey, before we get started, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification button. Hey, what's up Transformers fans, my fellow geek gals and geek guys. Welcome back to another episode of Mixelpix Transformers Time Warp. I'm Mike, and before we get into today's episode, I just wanted to apologize. Uh, somehow Unicron broke into uh, the previous video's stream and uh, inserted that, uh, that scary message. Uh, apparently his uh, coming is imminent and uh, we will be seeing him here on Transformers Time Warp uh, some point in the relatively near future, I think. Um, we're gonna have to be on the watch for that. Uh, so um, if there's any more breakthroughs, I wanna apologize ahead of time. I'll do what I can to uh, see if we can't secure the stream. So in preparation for that eventuality, I figured we'd continue the streak of looking at Unicron-related MP scale toys by looking at a Quinnison Judge and Galvatron Spaceship The Revenge from the 1986 animated movie. From MP scale newcomer Lemon Tree, Purple Potato, and from X-Trans Bots, Dr. Egg. <laughs> All right, I just couldn't resist doing a little bit of a sight gag here. It was uh, too perfect. Uh, all right, anyway, moving on, let's check out the real things. First up, Dr. Egg, ex-Transbots homage to the Quinnissons Judge class. The Quinnissons were first introduced to us in the 1986 animated movie, and unknown to us at the time, their race was the creator of all Transformers. But they're a misguided race in general, viewing all other beings as inferior. Their race is made of varying body types, each one belonging to a specific class and job role. This particular Quinnison is part of the ruling judge class, which enjoys making a mockery of justice and carrying out death sentences against the innocent. Now the judges all seem to have five faces. Whether or not all five faces match judge to judge, I don't know for sure, um, but we'll have to verify if this is actually the one from the movie or maybe a later episode in the cartoon once we see all of its faces. Let's have a quick spin of the box. Got some nice artwork here on the front. Got the uh, characters saying there on the side. That name and uh, model number on the top. The side. With uh, a little snippet of the art on the front on the side there. Apparently, I guess the quote. And uh, the logo with the schematic for the egg or rather for Dr. Egg. On the back, we've got some really cool art that's like reminiscent of the old G1 Transformers boxes where you had that big space battle showing uh, along with the bio card and stats. And on the bottom, it looks like a tease for the Quinnison Executioner. All right, cool. Magnet included. Hmm. All right. Off the bat, and it might be just because I've handled this, um, you know, before actually opening it, but, um, you know, it's got some scratches on the box art already. You know, uh, just a minor thing. I'm not trying to keep this pristine, but uh, kind of a bummer that it's scratched up um, just from a keepsake kind of standpoint. And I noticed that there are two stickers. This has been re-stickered. Uh, so I'm not sure what's up with that. I guess maybe they had to open it up. They forgot to pack something in it. So they opened it up and uh, had to reseal it. So this is sealed from, from the seller, you know, and from the, the production company, from x Transbots. Let's see about the bottom. And the bottom looks sealed as well. So let's open it up. All right, looks like they've got a plastic top to the tray there, so things are gonna be contained. It is kind of stuffed in here though. As you can see, the, the box is kind of bulging. So um, yeah, might take me a second. Wow. Oh, geez. Okay, let's try this off screen. Huh. All right, looks like there's an instruction packet in here, so maybe I can free that first, or not. How about we cut open the other side? 
see if we can push this thing out. All right. Now, let's try pushing it. Easier said than done, but there we go. Yep, here we go. Wow. That was a pain. What was making it stick? All right, underneath that, we've got five faces here. And we've got the collector's card and instruction booklet. Not sure exactly why that would have made this a difficult package to open. And here, we've got the five faces. And as you can see here, this is all five faces from the 86 animated movie. So this one Quintesson Judge could definitely be the one from the movie. Get a closer look at those faces. Wow. Those sculpts are nice. And uh, I'm gonna have to do this upside down so you can see that one. And uh, not bad looking. Really, really nice looking so far. All right, in handling that just now, it is obvious what was causing the package to uh, bulge and not be able to slide out very easily. And that is what's inside the actual styrofoam block itself. Uh, we got any tape going on here. We do have a little tape. So this sheet is apparently supposed to help you recalibrate, quote unquote, the uh, faces to the correct sayings because the mechanism could get out of whack during transportation apparently. So I guess if they're not saying the right thing, you can line them up to say the right thing. And just real quickly, before we take a look at the toy itself, here is the collector's card. And um, it looks to be a decent card. Got a little bit of a thick plastic thing going for it in its own sleeve. And uh, there you go, it's bio and stats. Cool. Another card to add to the collection. Hey, if you've got any way that you are keeping your cards, uh, like do you keep them in a baseball card binder or, or what? How do you collect your cards, if you're collecting the cards at all? Um, I'd like to find a way to display my cards, um, or at least keep them in a collected volume. So if you've got any uh, tips on that that you can share, um, I'd love to hear it. Let me know in the comments below. And thank you in advance. The brochure, nice color. In fact, you got that battle scene, which is cool. Ooh, a Mike Lorber connection. If you were checking out this video, then you'll have known that I mentioned Mike Lorber as being uh, a guy who has created Transformer scale charts. And um, his scale charts are currently what I'm using in conjunction with uh, the TFW 2005 scale chart from Techering and Namkin, um, the colorized version. And I'm using both of those to um, judge the scales of the toys that I'm getting. So very cool, freelance graphics. Check them out on Facebook, Mike Jonathan Lorber, Mike.Lorber.7, or Instagram at Grifter Prime. Cool. Okay, we got some color here. The remote control is an awesome addition. Um, I just thought this was gonna be an extra little bonus item, but it's actually the remote control for uh, the spinning head. So that's cool. And uh, <laughs> I bet you can't guess who that's supposed to be um, that Quintesson is choking in the right picture. <laughs> Pretty cool. Wow, this thing is massive. Holy moly. Look at that. <laughs> it looks like an electric mixer standing there right now. Ooh. This is a cool piece of uh, memorabilia um, callback to the 86 animated movie. Thank you, XTB, for including this. It is the remote control. Um, I, I wish it were just a, a model, 
and not and didn't have these buttons necessarily, but um, it's very cool. You can put it on display. I think it's going to definitely go on display with my um, Unicron, and um, and I think it'll fit nicely with the overall Unicron diorama or setup, whatever you might do with the War for Cybertron uh, Unicron or your O1 Studio Cell Unicron slash Zeta Unicron. This stuff is looking good. Um, I wish they had gone to the extra length maybe of actually, no, I really do wish they had gone to the extra length of actually carving this in behind the characters' faces. Um, there's something weird, kind of grungy white on here. Hmm. Looks like maybe it was where there was a mask or something because there's a slight difference in color right there if you can tell. So like maybe where they had a paint mask. Um, but this thing is heavy. I don't know how much it weighs, but this is uh, definitely metal. Um, this up here is also feeling like metal. So um, I don't know if all that's necessary. The price point on this thing was pretty high. As it's unfolding here, I am appreciating what I'm seeing, but uh, is the overall importance to my collection worth that cost? I don't know. I really think I could have done with just a plastic version um, that didn't actually have any motorization or lights necessarily. Maybe lights, but not the motor. Um, definitely didn't have to be the metal. Uh, I'm not sure why they felt like it had to be metal. Um, if I had just a manual spin top where I could change the faces or I could just spin it around and it would spin really fast and then click to a stop, um, that'd be cool too. So I, I've said this, uh, something similar to this before, but I think x Transbots has over-engineered this, but uh, my opinion could change by the time we're done checking this out. And I may actually have to uh, get batteries in this thing to actually really see what it does. Um, I uh, don't make a big point of putting batteries into things necessarily unless um, I really want to see the effect on camera. But um, yeah, I might have to do that for this one. All right. Got uh, his tentacles, looks like. And that's it for this half of the box. This half of the box still has the faces. Let's get those. Over here. All right, the five faces, and each of them represents a different aspect of the judge. So here we have uh, maybe the most famous one, the face of death, the face of war, the face of wrath. These things look really nice. This red and black really pops. The detailing on this is looking really pretty good. So X Transbots, uh, cheers to you for this quality work here. I like the uh, seriousness of these faces. Um, you know, though it's a Transformers cartoon, I like that you didn't make them cheesy cartoony. The face of wisdom, or I guess in their opinion, they have wisdom. And finally, the face of judgment. Very uh, dour, very serious. All right, let's get this Quintesson put together and see how it looks. And the milkshake beater. One quick discovery, the issue with the bulging box, um, I guess may not have actually been the contents of the box. You can see here the gap that's that's just like, you know, opening up by itself. The styrofoam box doesn't really fit together well. And you see, I do have it lined up. But it's not a perfect match, so it does want to bulge because of the styrofoam. Maybe the uh, Dr. Egg base and uh, bulb have something else to do with it, but uh, you can see evidence right here of what's causing the bulge. And now for Dr. Egg. I think it looks good on camera here. Um, it looks good in person. Uh, the size of it, I guess, uh, we'll have to see on the scale chart, see how it matches up. But um, yeah, I think it looks good. Again, the detailing here on the top of the egg would have been nice to see it actually extended, you know, down behind these characters um, so that it actually looked like uh, the faces were mounted on, you know, a plated metal surface. Um, 
but uh, not bad. Overall, the whole package, it, it looks pretty good. All right, now to get this thing turned on, it does require a AA battery that goes into the base of the character, which I've already put in. And it does have the remote control. I don't have the batteries for that, but apparently you can do a manual mode. So let's check that out. So as seen here in these instructions, you can use two buttons, one and two, to do some kind of manual mode. So let's try that. So let's rotate this guy to find the buttons. There they are behind Wrath. So apparently we're supposed to press button number one once to start getting into manual mode, another time to activate manual mode, and then if I'm understanding the directions correctly, button number two is going to be the one that we press in order to adjust Dr. Egg in manual mode, whatever that means. So button number one, twice, and then this two. It says again to close. So I guess one to open, two to get into manual mode, I don't know what that's gonna do. I don't see it doing anything. And then one to close. Maybe my battery's dead. Huh. Alright, bummer. Um, so can you not even really activate this thing without the remote control? Why would you have a manual mode if you can't? See on that side, there's the uh, sensor for the remote control, but I don't see an actual switch. So what are we supposed to do? Okay, well anyway, if we had batteries for the remote, it says that you're supposed to shake this in order to loosen the battery compartment um, cover. Okay. And then all it is, is I've done this once before. You just pull this out. And as you can see, there's the inside of the battery compartment. And uh, there are no batteries in there. And here is the battery compartment cover. Finely molded piece, so that when it goes back on, you barely even know it's there. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Nicely done. As I look more into the directions, I'm seeing that uh, the remote control actually selects manual or auto, so I guess we can't do anything without the remote control. So, no lights, no sound until we get batteries for this thing. I'll be back with those, and we'll see Dr. Egg in all of its light and sound glory. All right, so I did get batteries for the remote control, and uh, these little suckers can be expensive. I mean, uh, I wasn't able to uh, order them from Amazon because I didn't have the time, but uh, at my local Walgreens, these were like six bucks each, so you're talking about 18 bucks going into this little remote control. Um, anyway, my battery troubles aside, it's kind of a personal problem. We have batteries in the remote. We have a battery in Dr. Egg. So. Let's see what we can do, if we can get these lights and sounds working. One possible complication is that we have uh, two opposing um, instructions images showing where the positive and negative terminals are supposed to be. So um, in uh, this left one here, it looks like the positive terminal is supposed to be at the top of the battery. And um, over here then, it has them reversed and the positive is supposed to be at the bottom. So I believe I inserted it with the positive at the top but if that doesn't work, we'll have to go over to uh, positive at the bottom. So uh, let's see if this works or not. Okay, so the instructions aren't exactly clear. Um, I don't know if I can just use the remote and activate it, or if I'm supposed to use one of these two buttons on the front here. Uh, but let's see if we can just activate it. We've got our buttons here, on, off, manual, and auto. So do we get a light? If I go on, I do not see a light. I just put fresh batteries in this little guy. What if I hit auto now? Okay, how about off? All right, never mind. How about we 
try a button. That's supposed to be on. So as best I can interpret anyway. Nothing. Okay. All right. Let me see about getting this battery flipped in Dr. Egg. And once again, will he dance for us? Man, I don't know what's up. Why isn't there just an on off switch on this thing? So, okay, wait a minute, sensor's over here. Let's see about it now. And I am seeing zero light coming out of this remote. Uh, all right. Am I supposed to aim the dish at it? Zap, zap. Okay. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get this uh, working off camera and come back to you. Okay, now that I've got the batteries, uh, it took me a few days to actually get them in, but um, we have Dr. Egg with lights and sounds. So, for the remote control, you can use one of two battery types, apparently. Maybe more than two battery types, but uh, there's the one listed in the manual, which I've just confirmed does work. And there is another one that is listed in the uh, descriptions on tfsource.com and thechosenprime.com. So you can use one of two kinds of batteries. You can use the one found in the manual right here, the LR521s times three. So you need three LR521s, which are the ones that I have put in here. You can also use, because of the description I found on TF Source and uh, Chosen Prime, I thought I needed these. So I bought these. These are SR626SWs, and um, these I've confirmed also work with the remote. I can't tell you one way or another which battery is better. The official one in the manual is the LR521s. So probably for safety, go with that one. As far as powering Dr. Egg is concerned, though a AA battery fits in there, it is not the kind of battery that should be going into this. The kind of battery that goes into Dr. Egg itself to power it um, looks like a AA battery, but it is not a AA battery. So do not put just a regular AA battery in this thing. It will not work. And um, it should be a rechargeable battery as it says in the manual. So you need a 14500 battery as specified in the manual here, and you only need one of those. And I can't make any warranty or guarantee that I am doing this correctly. So uh, if you buy the wrong battery, don't blame me. Um, I'm just telling you what I got. And I was able to find this at uh, orbtronic.com. And it is a battery that is 3.7 volts, 14500. And um, it's, in this case, an 1100 milliamp hours, I think that is supposed to be. So this one is what is working in Dr. Egg right now. It is rechargeable lithium ion, and the port on Dr. Egg supports recharging the rechargeable 14500 battery. I would have loved it if uh, Dr. Egg had actually been able to run on like a C battery or something like that. Um, and uh, that the remote might have been able to run off of like two AAA batteries, something that's more standard. But, um, you know, you can order them and I'll put those links in the video description below. So on this guy, there are those two buttons. Go ahead and mess with these buttons if you want to. The manual uh, has some strange language about what they're supposed to do. Um, I've pushed them. I don't know what sequence uh, is working. Uh, I don't know what exactly they're supposed to be doing. I don't know if they're supposed to be just um, a way to interact with it without the remote. But as you can see, it does have that USB charging port right there. And as far as controlling this thing, I would just recommend using this remote control that's shaped like the ship that the Autobots have in the uh, battle with Unicron in the 1986 animated movie. So to do that, You've got some pretty simple controls. You can go on, 
and that's just gonna make sure that the system is actually on. Oh, it might be a little directional, so just turn it back around so that you can actually see where the sensor is. Whoops, wrong way. Just a quarter turn to the correct side, and then use the remote control with the on button to make sure that you're actually activating it. Oops, and It is quite directional. Um, there is the emitter right there. And unless you're pointing it, as I just saw, unless you're pointing it at the sensor, um, it doesn't necessarily connect. So um, it's got a range of about 10 feet, um, it claims in the manual. I don't know if that's gonna be exactly true unless you are directly line of sight from the emitter to the sensor. Now, as you saw, turning it on actually does get it going, but you can control it via manual if you want. So let's try manual. And manual will let you go one character face at a time. So here we go. Turn it on. Okay, so I had turned it to manual and that's why it stopped. So I will hit manual again and it'll go to the next face. Alright, and then if you want them all just to go in uh, sequence, just hit auto. Okay, so enough of that. Um, now, I don't know if you noticed, but the orange face uh, didn't light up. And um, I had noticed that uh, when I was uh, playing with this before I put it on camera, that um, a couple of the faces do not have the lights show up sometimes in the eyes. So the blue-green guy and the orange guy, um, those two have problems with the lights. And if you also noticed, the faces don't always rotate to the exact same spot when they stop. Uh, it's not a precise mechanism. So there's that, that's a negative, but that's the way it is. Also, the egg did get out of sequence with uh, the lights. The manual says that you may have to rematch the lights because it can get out of sequence during shipping. I can't give you the magic formula for that at this point. I don't know exactly what I did. I just kept moving it, moving it, moving it, turning on, off, uh, doing random things uh, with the remote control and the buttons uh, until I was able to actually get it uh, synced back up. So there's probably a better process for that, but I'm not sure what that is. So there you have it, Dr. Egg, lights and sounds. I'm enjoying it, but uh, I really think this remote would have been better if there had been like a forward and backward button on it. Uh, so that when you're doing manual, you can just flip between a couple of the faces and skip over one if you want, so you can just activate certain phrases. But um, that's not the way this works. So it's either one by one, and you can skip, but I mean, you gotta hit twice, and I think that might have been what got me into the trouble with uh, the faces not matching their their eyes um, was going too fast uh, for the mechanism to keep up or something. So it's uh, not without its um, quirkiness, but there you go, Dr. Egg's lights and sounds. Oh, and I wanted to see if this actually comes off because, you know, it's cool as a stand, but what if I just want to display it and I don't want to have this funky transparent thing on there, so, oh, it does come off. So if you want to pose this, with your Unicron, whichever Unicron you've got, then um, you don't have to show the buttons if you don't display it that way. Or you can turn them away and kind of hide them. And uh, you don't have to have that stand on there. So cool accessory um, as far as uh, setting up a diorama or a display. All right, you know what time it is. It's time for the Transformers Time Warp MP Scale Comparison Test. And let's bring in our two classic MP scale standards, MP10 Optimus Prime and MP21 Bumblebee. All right, and uh, Dr. Egg is um, eclipsing even Optimus Prime here. 
Um, so if we look at the Mike Lorber Freelance Graphics G1 Seasons 1 through 3 scale chart, then we'll see that actually Dr. Egg is too tall. Dr. Egg is definitely out of scale um, as far as height is concerned on that pedestal. Now, if we actually match them top of Dr. Egg to the ears of Optimus Prime, then uh, we'll get a better idea of whether or not the egg part in and of itself is actually to scale. All right, they're pretty close to matched. You can see that there's a little bit of a slant, um, not too bad, so they're not quite, you know, perfect, but you get the idea. So if they're leveled out like this, as you can see here uh, in these two images that are matched to Mike Lorber's G1 scale, uh, that the bottom of Dr. Egg should come to about the uh, knee of Optimus Prime, right above the blue boot. And if we check this out, then I think that's pretty good. So the problem really seems to be the energy beam on which he sits. We can actually say that this is scaled to Optimus Prime. Now I could definitely argue uh, against uh, scale here as far as the amount of space that the faces take up on the egg itself. Um, it looks more like the faces take more of the egg width than they do here in x Transbot's uh, version of the Quintesson Judge. But as far as the representation, I mean, the molding on this, the sculpt on the faces, um, the, the look of it is really good. And um, I think we've got an MP scale match. All right, so final thoughts on Dr. Egg. The big question is, would I buy this again at the $180 price point? That's a little bit of a difficult question because there isn't anything that scales out there on the market to our MPs except x Transbox. So even though there has been Impossible Toys and there has been the official Hasbro release of the Quintesson Judge, neither of them are actual scale to MP size. As far as the mechanics and the lights and sound go, they are of a limited appeal to me. I could have done without the motorized function. I could have just gone with a, uh, a hand twist and just let me twist the faces. Um, and then let me press a button at the top of the egg and have it say the phrase for each of the faces that I turn to. And maybe give it a double punch on the button at the top if you wanted them to go through all the faces. You know, so it could have been simplified. Um, the remote control doesn't have forward and backward, like I've already said, and that's a bummer because you can only spin in one direction. Uh, I, I don't really see much use for the die cast in it. Um, the housing of the egg itself is all metal. And while that seems cool, it's not necessary. High grade plastic would have been fine and um, just adds unnecessary weight and unnecessary cost, I guess. The lights in the stem could be brighter. Perhaps they could have run a string of LEDs uh, through the bottom of Dr. Egg in the, the top of the base there through the stem to the bottom and you know, could have spread LEDs out throughout it so that it would have actually had more of an actual glow instead of just being kind of spotty and not very bright. Um, it's cool to see the different colors, but um, they don't really you know, broadcast through the entire structure. Uh, better color saturation um, and brightness would have been preferable for this to really, really represent uh, an energy beam. So in the words of the judges, I would have to say that x Transbots Dr. Egg is both guilty and innocent. It's really up to you if you want to spend the money for this thing. It is well crafted as far as the sculpt of the face are concerned as a showpiece. Um, it's going to look nice on display. And I do like the idea that the remote control actually looks like the spaceship from the 1986 animated. So all in all, I am glad to have this in my collection because it is filling a spot which I don't have a character for. I don't have one of the Impossible Toys uh, Quintesson judges uh, in my collection. And uh, according to the scale chart, um, we would not have one that would be actual scale, except that XTV did this one. And with that, we've cracked Dr. Egg.